So I recently designed a 3D printed brushless DC motor using Fusion 360. I figured it would be a good CAD practice since I'm still fairly new to using CAD software for design. And um, the idea was to also design it so that it can be 3D printed. Um, mostly inspired by a video by Great Scott and Christoph Leimer, which I'll link both below. Um, yeah, so now I'll do a short walkthrough of the CAD model. Here's sort of an exploded view animation of the different parts. Um, yeah, it just kind of gives you an idea of how it gets put together, I guess. Uh, and then I'll go through kind of each one more individually. All right, so this is the motor here. Um, it's not very big. If I go to the inspection here, you can see the um, outer diameter is only about 32 millimeters. And the reason I made it so small is just uh, because those were the cheapest like magnets that were available that uh, fit with the design basically and um, also wanted to save on material and print time just in case that it wasn't really going to work very well. Uh, but it ended up working pretty well. So uh, we'll go through it now and I'll just show you, let's do, this is the rotor assembly. We'll start with that. You can see those are the magnets in there. Um, and the shaft is connected to the back of the rotor assembly here, just with some M 2.5, uh, screws that go through three of them that, um, come through and just hold that in place and secure it. And the magnets are arranged in a hallback array. This, uh, this I learned about from the Christoph Leimer video, um, which basically creates a stronger magnetic field inside the rotor assembly here and a weaker one outside um, where it's not really needed anyway for the purposes of the motor. Um, you can also see that I added these uh, snap-in pieces here, four of them around. Um, that was for this washer here that I also made. The idea was that this would help hold the magnets in, but it turns out you can get really good tolerances with 3D printing with a little practice. And uh, I was able to print it so that the, oops, so that the magnets in there are, are so snug that like it's almost impossible to get them out. In fact, I added these, uh, oops, what am I doing here? I'm moving this thing around. I added these holes at the back so that I could use a very small Allen key and push the magnets back out again, just in case I uh, inserted them the wrong way, wrong orientation, or there was some kind of problem. Uh, they didn't fit well or whatever. I just needed to take them out for any reason, basically. Um, next, we'll go to the stator. Pretty simple, just a kind of regular stator design. Nothing too crazy about it. The idea for this part is that it's going to be printed in um, protopasta uh, iron powder filament, I guess, which um, has a better magnetic permeability than just regular PLA, which is just plastic. So it should give the motor sort of better uh, power characteristics, I guess. Um, may not be great thermally and, and otherwise, but, uh, also inspired by the two videos below. So thought it would be a cool idea. It sounded very interesting. So wanted to try that out as well. And next we have the front end cap here, which is just a end cap really got some holes for mounting the motor and it holds the, uh, bearings. You can see one at the front there and one at the back so that the shaft can go through and um, rotate freely with that end cap on there. Yeah, and that's pretty much everything. Now we'll move on to the 3D printing, which was done on a Prusa i3 MK3S. Uh, the rotor assembly and the end cap were printed in a tough black PLA. See a few clips of that here. There were no issues with that really. It's very easy to work with uh, material. Uh, I think I got them both on the first try. No problems at all. The stator on the other hand was a little bit more difficult for me at first. Um, I kind of underestimated how easy it would be to use the iron powder filament. Uh, got a lot of problems with stringing and uh, like layer shifting, I guess, and the uh, filament um, slipping in the extruder. You'll see a bunch of test prints here uh, as I was trying to tweak all kinds of settings, uh, the retraction and, and all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, but eventually I did some more Googling, some more research, and I found an article by Protopasta that completely cleared everything up. Basically, the trick is to just print this stuff as fast as you can and just kind of get it to flow through quickly. Uh, 
And my theory here is that that helps a lot because the iron powder makes the filament more thermally conductive. It ends up getting soft up in the extruder and then the gears wear away at it and cause a bunch of slippage. And then you get these weird lines in between layers like that. Here are the final prints. You can see the end cap with the bearings inserted, the final stator print, and the rotor assembly with the magnets and the shaft inserted. The shaft um, is just a piece of quarter inch steel rod from Home Depot, so it's um, I had to cut it to size and then file it down, that's why it looks a little rough. And it's also not very precise, so there's a little bit of give between the shaft and the bearings, which um, causes it to wobble a little bit. There's a little bit of rubbing between the rotor and the stator, um, just because there's some give in between there. So maybe in the future I'll try and redesign it so it's more secure and precise. Okay, so here is the final motor print. You can see it's mounted to this nice stand here. Um, it does have mounting holes, but since this is on my desk, I just decided to tape it down for now. I'll give you a quick peek at the um, winding right here. So there are the windings. Um, I just wound each pull individually, basically, and then pulled the wires through so I can connect them in a star or delta wire delta configuration. Right now it's connected in a Y. And uh, those are the phases. And we come out here and are connected to this electronic speed controller, which is essentially meant for brushless motors that are used in uh, RC cars and planes and stuff. And that is connected to my big uh, lithium ion battery pack that I made. This is a 6S4P uh, pack. And these are the balancing wires uh, for maybe a future project where I'm gonna design a balance charger. This is probably something I use in a lot of experiments and uh, for different projects. So maybe that'll be something in the future, but it'll work for this test for sure. It's about 22 volts, so it should be able to you know, provide some juice and get this thing turning. Um, I don't have a really good lab bench power supply yet, so that's why I'm using the battery pack. Um, so then the control signal for the ESC is connected to this Arduino Uno, which is uh, providing the PWM control signal here, the orange wire, which is um, being adjusted through this potentiometer. That's just how I'm changing the PWM, so basically the throttle for the motor. So now I will try and get this thing spinning. I do have this piece of tape here, just so that we can maybe see it spinning a little bit easier more easily. So let's see if we can get it spinning. So it does get up there pretty quick. I don't want to hold it on because I don't want it to overheat. I think it, the wires are going to get really hot. Um, and also it seems like the ease is cutting out or something but uh yeah it does spin so that's a big win pretty pleased with that so all in all i'm pretty pleased with how this project turned out especially for a first attempt at a sort of a real cad design project and uh 3d printing a a motor and uh seemed to work and you know i managed to print the stator and magnetic filament which was a very interesting process and learned a lot about 3d printer settings by tweaking and experimenting with that and the motor actually spins we saw that we could actually get it to spin and there's probably some issues and and stuff but um, of course there's always room for improvements and maybe in the future i can make some kind of a test rig to um, experiment with what kind of speed and torque so power output that this motor is capable of. Um, and then I could potentially do a comparison of what the effects of the magnetic filament for the stator versus non-magnetic filament would be. I think Great Scott did that in his video as well. Um, I could also perhaps redesign it in a bigger form factor with maybe stronger magnets, you know, make some improvements, uh, bigger magnet wire so it can support larger currents maybe add some better sort of ventilation or even a fan uh, type attachment at the back here to give some more airflow through and provide some cooling. Lots of things can be done maybe, so we'll see what I do in the future. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching.